Greetings everyone and welcome to my channel. I'm your host Captain Ryan. Today's video has got me in a tier 10 ship that I really don't take out as often as I'd like to, in spite of the fact that I actually really enjoy playing this ship. And that of course is the tier 10 German destroyer, the Z-52, here in World of Warships. As the battle gets underway, it's Ridge, it's Domination match mode seems to be the most common for this particular map mode. And I am headed towards the A cap point. Now, I've spawned over here on the A side, and I've got a lot of support. The enemy team has also got a lot of support on the A side, and we're going to about to run into them. The problem with the Z-52, the one major factor that I don't like about it, is the fact that it has a larger detection range than something like the Fletcher or even the Gearing. And that is a serious concern for me, considering that this ship does not handle damage well. If it handled damage like the Gearing handled damage, which, by the way, the gearing is actually wider than this ship, and yet armor-piercing will over-penetrate it rather than penetrate like it does on the Z-52. If it handled damage like the gearing handled damage, I'd be a little more comfortable with this ship. Now, I'm spotted here. That's going to be because the Shimakaze has popped up here, and he is detecting me, but I'm still being detected after I pop my smokescreen. And you'll see that their smokescreen has been laid, and I would thinking that that smokescreen was laid by the Shimakaze, but I'm not sure, and I am being detected by the Des Moines that's up there, who is in that smokescreen. Now, I get torpedoes out into the center of that smokescreen, never know what I'm going to hit there, but look at this. Priority target tells me there are 12 enemy players, and half of them, half of them are targeting and shooting at me. I'm getting shot at from across the map, from the other side of the mountain range. Look how much damage I've just eaten in a very, very short order here. Fortunately for me, the radar dissipates. I'm no longer detected. I'm not in my smoke screen anymore, so any torpedoes headed that direction will not hit me. Now, Friendly Gearing manages to secure the first blood in this battle by taking out that Shimakaze, but he's not played it very smart, and he gets torpedoed as a result. So we've lost our Tier 10 Gearing, and the enemy team has lost their Tier 10 Shimakaze. I did manage to connect with something in that smokescreen. I'm not entirely sure what, though. And there is more than one thing pushing up into that smoke screen. There's at least the Des Moines that's still up there, but look at that, there's a Yamato pushing up there. Now the Yamato is targeted, I've got torpedoes out on the track for him, but the smoke screen's starting to dissipate and there we can see the Des Moines. Now, I didn't obviously hit the Des Moines based on the fact that he's full strength, so I'm not sure exactly what I hit in that smoke screen. And I'm not sure even who laid the smoke screen, considering how long that smoke screen lasted. Now, the Yamato is turning, so he's going to miss the set of torpedoes that were fired at him. But I fired my second set of torpedoes, center of mass, into that smoke screen. And it kind of looks like the Yamato might actually end up getting hit by that. Now, I was hoping the Des Moines would get hit by them, but he's well out of range there, so there's no chance of that. The Yamato getting ever closer to those torpedoes, and I'm hoping, yes, I managed to connect with something. Hold on. I just hit the Fletcher. Enemy Fletcher, Tier 9, a very dangerous destroyer, was unfortunately in the wrong spot at the wrong time, and I managed to kill him, earning, of course, the I will find you and I will kill you award for managing to do that, which makes me kind of happy because the whole reason I actually took the Z-52 out was to earn that award. So that leaves the enemy team with two destroyers. Now, I am still very low health, so I have to avoid getting too close to anything with radar, hydro, or spotting distance. And the two remaining destroyers are both destroyers that can spot me, so I have to be careful. Enemy Fletcher did get torpedoes away there, and those are going to go further downrange. Now, they haven't been spotted, so I'm hoping that whoever's back behind me is paying attention. That enemy Yamato, he's doing what Yamatos love to do. He's bow tanking. He's reversing. And because I saw that happening, I fired off my torpedoes on a track behind where the lead indicator was, figuring he was going to continue to reverse. And my torpedoes, yes, they are going to hit home. And there we have it. Now, I hit him with five, but only four actually did damage because that fourth one managed to detonate him. Ooh, that's got to suck for you. But then again, on the other side, you were dead anyway because you got hit by five torpedoes. And really, that last one, that number four, only did 26,000 damage when you were detonated. 
Of course, you were detonated. It was an explosive finish. So, of course, I have to type in and ask the question, was it good for you? Now, the enemy team has managed to kill yet another destroyer, but we've also managed to kill yet another destroyer. So they're just left with one, and that's the Shimakaze. And he could be anywhere at this point, but he's last seen over by the sea cap point. Now, my team kind of split effectively, and we went... A, C. We captured the C cap point, but look at this. The enemy team has pushed in force to the C cap point, and they're in a position to basically just drive out our team, which is what they're doing, and kill them. And the rest of my team is not in a position to support them at all. There's no way most of the battleships and cruisers that are back over at the A cap point can even remotely begin to help out our teammate over there. Hell, I can't even see our teammates over there for line of sight. Now, as I'm pushing up towards the B cap point, and I have to push the B cap point because we absolutely need that cap. If we don't have it, there's a real risk here that we could lose. Again, enemy team getting those caps early on, especially dual caps, means they're going to be gaining points faster at double the rate my team does. Now the Des Moines I'm not too worried about because he was last seen close to the border. He's basically running for the border. I get shots out here with torpedoes at that Iowa and that's going to be important because that Iowa is a smart player. He's not going to sail in a straight line. As you can see, he's already starting to turn away. So my torpedoes, very strong probability they're going to miss. They're going to time out. Now I've already wasted my torpedoes and that's when enemy Shimakaze pops up and look at this. He's full strength. I'm like a quarter strength. He could use his guns and wreck me, but I popped my smoke screen. I popped my hydro because he kept coming towards me. He wasn't paying attention. And now he is well within hydro acoustic range, and I can see him. I can see that he's got torpedoes out. I'm going to start backing up. I'm going to continue pumping rounds into him. And look at the rate of fire on this is fantastic. It is basically the same rate of fire that you get on the gearing. And the high explosive is actually pretty decent here and doing a really good job. Yeah, I could probably use armor piercing and do just as good a job, just about as much damage there. Again, hydro up. I can see he's got torpedoes out at there. But even without hydro up, I would still expect torpedoes to come in here and keep moving. That destroyer is down and out. This makes me very happy as there are now no more enemy destroyers on the enemy team. There's still two radar cruisers that can detect me. And again, I don't have a lot of health here to deal with that kind of situation, but both of them are well outside of their radar range to spot me. Now I get torpedoes off there at a Bismarck, I believe that was briefly spotted there and I'm hoping I can hit him. I'm still in the B cap point, but I'm not capping anymore. So that tells me, yeah, somebody's in here with me and I don't necessarily know who it is. I'm trying to set that turpits on fire, but I'm not really in a position to deal with continuing to shoot as my smokescreen disappears. And that's when the Monarch pops up. He's in the cap with me. Now, that Monarch is in prime spot for my torpedoes who weren't even aimed at him. I didn't know he was there when I fired them, but I'm still going to manage to connect with him with at least one. Now, I say one because at least one did hit the Bismarck behind him since they both ended up right there. Advantage to the Z-52, if you find yourself playing against the German destroyers, yeah, the torpedoes don't seem like they do a lot of damage, but you have to remember they reload insanely fast. I've only got eight of them, so I have like a one-minute reload with the reload module, with everything, the captain skills, all of that, so I can get torpedoes out at a ridiculously good rate here. Now, I'm targeting the Bismarck and not the Monarch, because the Bismarck looks like he's going to just kind of sit back behind there, but of course the Bismarck is not going to sit back behind there, and he's actually going to start motoring on, and he's going to use that island as cover. Smart Bismarck, as of course you can see, my team is still bottled up over at A with the channels being very, very well defended. Now I'm detected by radar, and that is going to be the Des Moines. Fortunately for me, I'm far enough away from these enemy battleships that I'm able to prevent them from shooting at me because there's an island in the way. And I managed to take out that Monarch, makes me very happy. Have some shots coming in here from the Turpets. Those are secondaries flying in there. And I'm trying to maneuver. I'm no longer detected, this makes me happy. Managed to connect with the Turpets behind the Monarch with one there. Run into friendly battleship and eat about 1200 damage in an armor piercing shell that was meant for him. That's really unfortunate for me again because I cannot afford to take any sort of damage. 
Now this Turpitz is out there, but he's a little bit too far for my torpedoes, and he's headed behind that island. He's going to go join the brother ship, the Bismarck there, and I can see that the Bismarck is playing it very cautiously. Now, I fired off shots I was briefly detected there before my smoke screen was fully available to me, so these shots coming in from the Turpitz, fortunately none of them hit me, nothing detonates me, but I've popped a smoke screen and now I've got nothing to shoot at because nothing's being detected within range that's not currently hiding behind an island. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to have to get motoring and leave my smoke screen, which is kind of disappointing because I laid it down for the specific purpose of hiding in it. Now I get shots off here as I leave the smoke screen at the Des Moines that was starting to come around the headland of that island, and I do connect with him, and I managed to set him on fire, and that makes me happy because that Des Moines was a thorn in my side. There's the enemy Moskova is still over there as well, and again, have to be careful with that Moskova. He's got longer range radar than the Des Moines, so I have to keep my distance especially from him. Fire off torpedoes at the Turpets. Now, specifically at the Turpets, and that's going to play an important part. The Turpets has slowed down. He's actually stopped for the moment. And the second set of torpedoes here is fired off at the Bismarck, who's reversing at the time that I fire him. And the reason I clarify who I'm targeting and what they're doing, because it's a fluid and dynamic battle, and things don't always stay the same. Friendly Zhao meets his sticky end to this battleship Moskova. Really disappointed there, was going to hopefully try and get up here and provide him something, but unable to do so. Now the first set of torpedoes fired off of that Turpitz do manage to connect with him, and they do cause flooding, and they knock out a module. That's important because that means he's going to have to repair that before my second set reaches this. No, this is not a replay bug. This was a glitch in the game itself. I experienced that live when that happened, and that freaked me out massively. My second set of torpedoes managed to connect with that Turpitz who did start moving forward while the Bismarck moved back to the island. So I managed to secure my Kraken Unleashed and a high caliber taking out that Turpitz. Now the enemy team's still up on points because they've had those two cap points, but look, they're losing ships left and right now. My team has finally managed to get their shit together and start pushing like they should have been instead of just holding on to the A cap point. And really, all the enemy team had to do was defend at B. And unfortunately, they didn't coordinate very well, and their Iowa and their Des Moines didn't team up and just kind of defend at B and pick off the Amagi, who's actually chasing both of them. Now that Bismarck is backing up, I get torpedoes off at him, and he's continuing to back up. So I was actually kind of expecting him to maybe stop, maybe move forward again. So unfortunately, the first set in that spread are going to miss him completely. But he doesn't have a lot of health left. So as long as I can hit him with a couple, I might actually be able to finish him off as well. And yeah, it looks like I'm going to hit him with at least three here as he continues to back up into it. And yes, there's all three. And that's going to secure me my sixth kill in the game. Finishing him off, and look at the amount of damage I've managed to do. 228,000 damage. And now I can go ahead and get up here and take the B cap point. Or at the very least contest it. But you'll notice that Moskova is well within his radar range now. And I am well within his radar range. And he's starting to move out from behind that island. Which indicates to me he wants to pop his radar. And he wants to get shots off at whatever is in this cap point. And of course, based on what he can see, he knows what's in this cap point. He knows it's the destroyer. And yes, he pops his radar. He's targeting me. I am going to take shots in from him. But I'm working hard to get out of line, out of the distance away from that radar. If you run into radar, that's the only defense you have is to effectively hit your speed boost and run. Or if you don't have your speed boost, just run go perpendicular to that enemy ship and open the distance. That's your only way to defeat radar. You can always turn around and come back later if there's no chance that this guy's going to die. Now, my team is in the prime advantage position here because we still have four ships. We've got me and the destroyer. I can effectively spot for people. And my torpedoes, not quite enough range, didn't hit the Moskova, which is unfortunate because I could have hit him with one if I had an extra kilometer, maybe kilometer and a half there. Kind of disappointed there. 
But now I'm up here, I'm capping the B cap point, and I'm capping with the Des Moines. Now this Des Moines is being a very good team player. He's effectively getting shots out. He's focusing down that Moskova. Very, very smart move here. That Moskova needs to die. He's the only thing that could threaten me at this point because he's the only thing with radar and he's got a good rate of fire. Now he's on fire and he's taking a lot of hits there, but you'll notice Des Moines has turned broadside on to get all of his guns to bear on that Moskova and that's going to cost him as the Iowa manages to connect with him. And that's not the last time we're going to see that Iowa connect with dangerously good long range gunfire. Now that Moskova puts the fire out and this is kind of where I've screwed up. I was hoping that I could deal with this Moskova and finish him off because he was very low health. And unfortunately, it's about this point that I realize my mistake, I pop my smoke screen, I try to turn away, but nope, that Iowa manages to connect on me at range and take me out of the game. I nearly screwed up this battle royally by opening fire. I made a big mistake in doing that. Instead, I should have just kept my guns quiet, kept my distance, and gone to the C cap point. And the reason I should have done that is because the Kerfurst managed to set that Moskova on fire and finish him off. So now it's just the Iowa. It's the Iowa versus our Kerfurst and an Amagi. And both of these ships are good ships. And they're both in an excellent position here because no matter which way this Iowa angles, he can angle against the Yamagi or he can angle against the Kerfurst, but not both. So they're in a prime position to cross fire on him. But of course, look at our Kerr first. Look what he's doing. He's broadside onto this Iowa and he eats a huge chunk of damage here. And we're not really in a position where we can afford to lose another ship. Not only that, the enemy team is still gaining points, again, because I didn't keep my guns quiet and go take the sea cap points. So they're still gaining points, but we're not far away from their points and we're now gaining at twice the rate they are. The problem is, there's not a lot of time left in this game. And I'm not sure at this point if we can actually win on points. If our points total is going to catch and just surpass the enemy points total. So I'm really hoping that both of these battleships can deal with this Iowa. Or at the very least, not die and not end up in a draw or worse, a defeat. Now, the Kerfurst has switched on to a bow on, as has the Iowa, but of course the Iowa is basically broadside on to the Amagi, but the Amagi shots are not accurate. They're falling a little short. So I'm actually going to provide battle information for both of these ships, because when you're playing the game, you can't always see what's around the corner. But if the ship's being detected and you've got a teammate who's dead, who's still in the game and watching, your teammate can provide better information, better spotting information too, as I'm going to tell. The Amagi, you need more lead. So the Amagi adjusts his aim and he gets more lead there. Unfortunately, he gets a little too much lead and only brackets the bow of this Iowa. Now this Iowa is coming up on this island and he's using it as cover. This is a bad news and good news. It's good news for the Kerfers. He's not gonna take any more shots from this Iowa. It's bad news though because it means the Kerfers can't get shots on him and there's not a lot of time left. The points difference isn't a lot here, but it's just enough that there's a very strong possibility we may not be able to gain those points. Now the Amagi, who is completely naked and no flags by the way, is getting shots out here. Again, this Iowa is broadside onto that Amagi. But now, looking at it, his guns are pointed at the Amagi. He's actually taking shots at the Amagi, who's broadside onto the Iowa, but the Iowa's having a hard time connecting now. He got his RNGesus luck taking out the Des Moines and taking me out. Now he can't land solid hits on the Amagi. But because his guns are pointed the other way, the Kerfurst is going to come around the corner here on the opposite side. His secondaries are going to open up, and he's going to get those shots out and finish him off there to secure our victory with like 20 seconds left on the clock. 230,000 damage total here. Look at the total credits earn 946,000. Earn the painted gold. And of course, it's not a pyramid scheme. Confederate high caliber Kraken unleashed in that game. 21,000 XP earned, but that is because it was 200% XP gain. But still though, 
earned 3,100 base XP for my contribution in that game. I would have earned more, again, if I hadn't opened fire. Got a little overconfident, a little too cocky in this game, and almost cost the team the victory. If I just waited, I could have finished him off, I could have cap C, and then I could have uncontested and unmolested gone and molested that Iowa. Anyway, that's it for today's video, folks. If you like the video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe, follow button, and leave a comment down below. If you'd like to get semi-regular channel news and updates, you can do so by liking and following me on Facebook. If you'd like to help support me and the channel, you can do so by becoming my supporter on Patreon. Patreon supporters will receive additional perks when I play various games and live streaming purposes. If you've got a replay like this one that you'd like to see featured on my channel, you can send it to my email. And if you'd like to watch me play various games live, you can do so by following me on Twitch. You can find the links in the video description down below. And as always, I'll see you next time. This is Captain Bry, signing off.